here is the same capability of what is currently sitting on the chills and the many other assets that uh, you're familiar with. Uh, I want to thank very much, Premier, uh, you uh, for the close working relationship that we've had uh, over many, many months as we've worked through uh, all of these fires, whether they're standing together up in Rapville all those mm -hmm. months ago and, and here we are again today and as we will be for many months to come. And can I thank you also, Commissioner Fitzsimmons, for your incredible leadership over these, uh, over these many, many months, going back to August um, uh, for you. And uh, I know that uh, puts a very heavy load and, and despite that, you, you turn up fresh every single day and uh, it's always a great encouragement to see that. And to, to Major General Elwood, uh, it's been a good opportunity for for you and of course the Commissioner and the Premier and I to talk about the, the announcement that was made yesterday and, and to address it, uh, in, any range of issues to ensure we're getting that uh, close communication in place and, and we're looking forward to that being a, a very, very strong relationship going forward as it indeed has been uh, through embedded uh, nature of the ADF in the New South Wales operations now for a very long time. So I want to thank you for that, Gladys, and uh, a lot more work to do. Uh, both of us uh, will have to return to our various bases uh, straight after this. Of course, uh, the Commissioner and the Premier returning to Sydney and, and, and I and, uh, and uh, the Major General returning to Canberra. Uh, there will be a Cabinet meeting there tomorrow, a National Security meeting committee meeting there also tomorrow. Uh, we've both conducted rather lengthy press conferences today. Uh, Premier? Well, thank you, Prime Minister. It's uh, good to be here and, and to obviously um, continue to work together. The um, Defence Forces have already been embedded in our operations intimately in New South Wales uh, for a significant number of months. We're grateful for the support we received to date and we look forward to this uh, ongoing close working relationship. Thanks very much, Gladys. Commissioner? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can confirm that uh, we've still got 150 fires across New South Wales. We are certainly seeing an easing of conditions right across the state and as a matter of fact uh, there's even a bit of drizzle ha happening down here on the south coast and it's certainly welcome reprieve. It's, it's, it's psychological relief if nothing else for, for all the communities being affected by these fires uh, but unfortunately uh, it's not putting out the fires. Uh, it's not helping us with the, the furthering of the work of backburning and consolidation work. Uh, so we will have to wait till we see uh, this, this moisture uh, dissipate so we can get on with the important work of containment lines and backburning and consolidation right across uh, the enormity of these fire grounds. Uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of hectares, as a matter of fact millions of hectares currently in New South Wales on active fires. Uh, we'll be doing that uh, right throughout the coming week before we see a return to warmer conditions uh, and more windy conditions towards the end of the week. Uh, all our fires uh, are now off the emergency warning alert level. Uh, we've got nine at, the, nine at the watch and act alert level, which is indicative of ongoing fire behaviour and potential uh, uh, and fire still burning in and around lots of communities. There's lots of damage and destruction, so roads are being assessed and being repaired and being made good. So people please uh, sustain your vigilance, maintain that vigilance, maintain the focus. Uh, yes, we can, we can take a bit of a reprieve in the weather conditions, but we want, want everyone to do is remain focused. Complacency kills uh, and we've still got a long part of this summer to go. Thank you very much, Shane. Major General, we were in Victoria yesterday, New South Wales today. Uh, look, um, it's, it's been uh, actually a really good opportunity to get out on the ground and to see what's been happening. There's been some amazing work from the emergency services. I've been to Victoria and I've been to New South Wales. Uh, fantastic integration with the ADF and obviously now a uh, significant uh, surge in, uh, in capabilities available and we will work very closely with the states to make sure that it is in sync and we have the right forces at the right time uh, doing the right things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks time everybody. For a couple of quick questions. Yep. In your conversations with um, Commissioner Fitzsimmons today, mm. have you apologised for him for what you described in that? Yeah, we've had that discussion today and we've been working closely together for many months and the, the communications issues have been addressed within Defence and well, that's uh, been a good opportunity today for the Major General and the Commissioner actually just to talk through the arrangements that are being put in place today and it's been a good opportunity to follow that up this afternoon. Lucy Hopkins, BBC News. Mm. Given the severity of the crisis mm. and some of the missteps that have been made, why should Australians be confident in the leadership? The response that you're seeing rolled out here in Australia at a state level and a commonwealth level is unprecedented. This is the largest single call out ever of Defence Force reservists working together with our full-time Defence Forces to provide a support which this country has never seen before. On top of that, the financial support that is going to be provided, and I'll be making more announcements about that yesterday, but already some 25 million working in close partnership with the states and territories. What it matters is what happens on the ground. 
the resources that are made available, the delivery of the services that are necessary, and the rebuilding effort and recovery effort that we'll see into the future. I'm focused on the work that needs to be done, just like the Commissioner, the Premier and the Major General. Prime Minister, a quick follow-up. We've flown from London this morning via yeah. Singapore. The whole world is watching Australia right now. The hashtag is Australia on fire. Yeah. What message would you like to give the world and people who are watching? Thank you very much for your support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you, did you agree with... Uh... OK, so it looks like... Actually, he's coming back to the mic, so I might just take a bit... No, no he's not. Thank you. Uh, so that was the uh, Prime Minister, along with the New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian and the Royal Fire Service Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons. They're speaking in Nowra just a short time ago. Uh, so we had uh, that kind of awkward situation earlier this morning with the Rural Fire Services Commissioner saying he was uh, disappointed and frustrated, I think his words were, uh, with the Prime Minister's office uh, because the first he heard about this announcement uh, of uh, Army reservists, up to 3,000 Army reservists being made available uh, to the firefighting effort was through the media yesterday. Uh, so there were some uh, communication issues there and uh, Fitz, uh, Shane Fitzsimmons well, clearly this morning was not impressed with that. Uh, so that's a bit of a show of unity there from the Prime Minister, the New South Wales Premier and the Rural Fire Services Commissioner in New South Wales.